Hey guys, it's Rinsler and welcome back to Ace Attorney. In the last episode, we managed to find out and chat to the suspect arrested for the evidence room murder, finding out from him that there was footage of the crime and that the body disappeared. Well, he was, he's been assured that it was Detective Goodman in that room. It had to have been him. So, on that note, let's jump punk it in the investigation, try and find this footage, and crack the case. Enjoy. Right, we're gonna uh, uh, head off to Criminal Affairs. See if we can't track down this tape. February 23rd, Police Station, Criminal Affairs Department. Hey, Mr. Wright, look who's standing at the Chief of Detective's desk. It's Police Chief Gant. And you're sure this is all? Hmm? You know what it means if there's anything missing. Sir, I'm sure it's most likely totally perfect. We checked all of his drawers, lockers, garbage cans, bags, coats, pockets, hats. On his seat cushion, behind his computer monitor, beside his personal coffee machine. I see. Well, if you does turn up, you call me right away, deal. Yes, sir. We'll scour the place again, sir. The chief of detectives looks a little flustered. <laughs> right oh my boy. How you been? Swim much? Oh, ho, ho, Chief Gant. Reporting for duty, sir. Why are you saluting him, Mr. Wright? Let's have a chat. Edgeworth. Tell us about Edgeworth. Um, is that just going to be okay? Oh, Worthy? Oh, you know, they're doing quite a, quite, quite a little... <laughs> oh, Worthy? Oh, you know, they're doing a little inquiry committee with him. Sounds like an inquisition. Yep. Well, they've had no end of trouble with the boy since last year. You mean the incident on Good Lake? It doesn't look good having a top prosecutor sit in the defendant's seat, does it? And you, you got someone else found guilty in that case, right, right, oh? One karma. A legend he was, undefeated in his 40 year career. But in court, you fixed it so he was caught for forging evidence. Wait, I didn't do anything wrong. He did forge evidence. In any case, the prosecutor's office is in a bit of a turmoil, you might say. Why, they do just about anything to restore their reputation. Now, depending on what inquiry committee decides, it could be bad for Worthy. What? It's downright odd, I tell you. The detective getting killed on their turf, too, I mean. That being the prosecutors, I guess you. Scientifically speaking, it's impossible. Yes, but that's what everything's saying. Goodman was stabbed in two locations at the same time. That's what it says. <laughs> what evidence is this? Now, now, righto. I can't give away all our secrets just like that. And this in particular. Well, it's a little sensitive, and I can't talk about it. I wasn't expecting much anyway. You know. You know, one thing I hate most of all is hiding stuff. Secrets. Can't stand them. But, you know... It's a full-time job, just keeping the Chief of Detectives' trap shut. Ah. He was the one you were picking on earlier. Huh? You saw that? Whoops. I wonder what it was that you wanted the Chief of Detectives to do. 
Let's see if we can kind of discreetly ask him. Yes. So you're, the ch you're the chief, aren't you? <clears throat> you're the only desk facing the other way. Ooh, sorry you had to see that. Uh, what exactly did the chief of police want you to do? Well, see over there? That's Goodman's desk. He wanted me to check it for anything that might be a clue. They took away every last bit of garbage in the trash can. So, nothing to Detective Goodman still here? Of course not. Well, except for this. What? You kept something? Sure, why not? It's not important. Didn't even finish writing it. It's the last item report, but it's only half complete. A lost item? Did Dec Detective Goodman lose his lose something? The date on it's February twenty first. Better make a note of that just in case. I should really get back to investigating the police department crime scene. Can you give me permission to enter the uh, crime scene? Actually, I was wondering if I could ask you a favour. Hmm? Well, I never thought the day would come when Raito asked for me help. Me for help? I was wondering if I could investigate the evidence room. Now, Raito. Actually... I'm sorry, I don't need to investigate after all. Right, oh, please. Don't look like a selfish man. Huh? Heck, if anyone asks me to, sir, can I borrow $50? I'd give them $50, no problem. So go ahead and investigate that room to your ass content. Knock yourself out. Just goes to show, you never know until you ask. And for you. Here, you can borrow this. Uh, hey, this is a detective's ID card, isn't it? That's a special card for guests, so don't lose it. Yes, sir. It's an honour. You just run along and do your best now. Later, folks. Haha. <laughs> Looks pretty cool on my lapel, doesn't it? Just think, a real ID. You seem happy. Yes, sir, because, sir, we get to go into the evidence room now, sir. I think this place is a bad influence on the girl. Right. Evidence room, please. Uh, police department entrance. And we'll go in guard station. Examine. Can't read it. The evidence room is behind that door. And we have the ID card from Chief Gant. Let's just walk in. It won't open. Aha. Card reader's turned off, see? What is that security guard thinking? Howdy, partners. Well, well. What's made my bambina sky so grey? Officer Marshall. Why does it have to be him? What's that? Why does it have to be him? Look for. As you may have surmised, this here's my saloon. Um, we're here to investigate the crime scene. Yeehaw, that card you got there on your chest. That's better than a sheriff's badge in these parts. Yeehaw. Well, what are you standing there for? Get on, little doggies. Crown scenes are waiting. Thank you. Looks like the card reader's on again. While we're here, 
I was wondering if we could ask you some questions. Sorry, cowboy, but I got no mind to tangle with you, hombres. You're busy then? Did I say that? I only said I didn't wish to speak with you. Actually, you said you had no mind to tangle us with, with those hombres. Uh, should we, uh... I think we have a... Ooh, ace up our sleeves. And that smell. Ah, reminds me of Texas. So, Officer Marshall, you're from Texas? No, I just saw a special on television the other day. Is this from my baby? Uh, yeah, Miss Star. What's this? What? What's wrong? Filet steak lunch? I see, I see. I don't see. Wonder what it means. Steak lunch given to Officer Marshall. All right, Bambina, you win. Ask anything. I won't do the mouth noises because it disgusts us. <laughs> Finally, it seems like he's willing to talk. All right, let's have a chat. Guard station, please. Officer Marshall, you're in charge of security for the evidence room, right? You got good eyes, partner. It's an easy job and I'm grateful for it. Actually, Officer Meekins at the detention center told us. Ah, uh, that poor little doggy. Poor guy. I keep getting his name wrong and call him Meekly. He told us something. He said that when the stabbing occurred, you were not at your station. Well, maybe I shouldn't be telling you this, but since I got to motive from Detective two years ago, well, it might not look it, but I lost my fire for the job, you know. So, what were you doing around 5.15 when the murder took place? Well... I reckon I was galloping down the highway on the back of my steed Zippy. Note, he was riding down the highway on his horse named Zippy. There is no need for people here anyhow. These new fanga machines do a bang up job of keeping an eye on the place. You mean the security camera system? I don't take to machines much. Can like that stewed broccoli that can like that stewed broccoli that sneak in next to your steak, you know. Tell us about Marshall. Miss Starr told us something. She said that you were a detective until years, two years ago. It was always my dream to be a rawhide wrangler on the scene of the crime. That's all gone now. Like a drinking hole in a prairie fire. You're still investigating the SL9 incident with a Miss Star, aren't you? That was my case. It's all solved on the record books, but it smells like a bad game of poker. I can't let it go. That's all there is to it. What kind of case was it anyway? We've heard the name so many times, but no one tells us what actually happened. There are some things you're better off, better off not knowing, Bambina. Anyway, that case is officially dead as of two days ago. Two days ago? The day of our case? That's right. The evidence transferals. Edwards was talking about the transferals too. That's about the security system. I know what 
maybe two of these machines in here do? Only two of them? There must be a dozen. Like I said, Bambina, men machines, well, I like them about as much as I like my stewed cauliflower with my sticks. The easiest ones to understand are these security cameras. Those are the ones that Officer Meekins mentioned. If nothing happens, the tapes are automatically erased every few hours. And Officer Meekins, Detective Goodman. Are they on no one of those tapes? I reckon they might be. You're the security guard, and you reckon? One, one more thing. When you go into Evan's room, you need an ID card. Thus the card reader by the door. The card reader leaves a record of every ID card that passes through. So this is the ID card record. Hey, I've seen that somewhere before. Sorry, Bambina. Can't you show you more than that? I haven't heard whether it's related to the case yet. Mr. Wright, I saw a number on that record just now. I've seen that number before. Maybe there's some way I can prove that record is tied to the stabbing. Ask him about the transferal first. Sorry, but could you explain what this whole transferal thing is about? We keep only evidence from solved cases in this room. They are kept here under press sudden detective supervision for two years. So we can reinvestigate them if it turns out there was a mistake, see? So what happens to the evidence after two years? It goes to sleep forever in the underground vault of the county sheriff's department. That's what we call transferal. We do it every Feb every February. I almost said Friday there. Every February. I see now. Transferal is like a funeral for old cases. Two years after a case is solved, it's closed forever. Dead. Never to be reopened again. Never to be inve reinvestigated. And that happened to SR9 two days ago. Right. Uh, present. I'm sure Goodman's ID card was on that thing. See this? This is the victim's ID card. Ah, the one that was on the ground in the parking lot. The number on this is 584289. Officer Marshall, show us that ID card record again. There you go, 5.14 p.m. Look at the fourth number, it's a perfect match. It was used at 5.14, right before the stabbing. What's more, there's only one of them cards in the, in the world. So, when the incident occurred, Detective Goodman was in the evidence room. But wait, what did Officer Meekin say? <laughs> Sir, I entered the evidence room and asked the man to display his ID card. So you asked Detective Goodman to show his ID card? What, what did he do? <sighs> That's the thing! Suddenly he pointed a knife at me! If he had his ID card then, why would he have pointed a knife at Officer Meekins? Alright compadre, you win. I guess I can give you this ID card record. ID card record added to the court record. A lot of records. I've got an idea. Maybe you should show this list to other people with IDs here. That's actually not a bad idea. 
But for now, we're going to jump into the Evans rooms beyond that door. I turned on the card reader. Go have yourself a ball, partners. Now I have the ID card. A real ID card. Let's get this investigation started already. See if we can... We'll just move straight in there. Yeah, there we go. Evidence room. February 23rd. Evidence room sector 3. It's quiet. The investigation must be over here. So this is the evidence room. It really is kind of like a graveyard. Graveyards are supposed to have grass and trees. This feels more like a morgue. Nice try, Mr. Wright. You can't scare me. Oh, hi, Gumshoe. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, laddie. So, sorry, I thought you were a ghost. I wouldn't recommend going around smacking ghosts on the head, pal. Was it true what I heard? Right, oh, please, do I look like a selfish man? Heck, if anyone asks me for sir, can I borrow $50? I'd give them $50, no problem. So go ahead and investigate that room to your heart's desire. Knock yourself out. Yeah, it's true. So, Chief Police Gant. Loan anyone 50 bucks? Even me? Oh, so that's what you were talking about. Actually, I was put in charge of the investigation for today. Just for today. Boss for a day. But guess what? You got permission from the Chief, so now you're a boss for a day. Gee, thanks. First of all, you want to have this? Heaven's Room floor plans, thank you very much. Let's have a chat, you and I. Boss for a day. So, Detective Gumshoe, your boss for the day? That's right, it's an honour. After all, the murder took place right here in the police department. But if you're boss, why are you all alone? Where are your underlings? They're using yesterday's findings to prepare for tomorrow's trial. In other words, you got kicked out of the investigation again. I'm adamant though. I'm going to I'm going to take control of it and put this case to the rest. In my own evidence locker pal. You have a locker in here, Detective Gumshoe? Huh, of course. I am a detective after all. They gave me a locker that only I can open, pal. Only you can open. Edgeworth, my boy. I'll always believe in Mr. Edgeworth, no matter what happens. So, Mr. Edgeworth is with the Inquiry Committee now, right? They're trying to figure out who's responsible for the mess up in the court today. I see. I guess this is what you call feet. Mr. Redworth just can't get away from that case. That case? Yeah, that case. The SL9 incident, of course. That was the beginning of the end for Mr. Redworth. Maybe we can get him to tell us more about the case. Evans lockers, please. This place is more high tech than you might think. Every locker is fixed so that only one detective can open it. Using their ID card? Well, that's the thing, pal. ID cards can be lost. Why, I'm on my third card since entering the force already. That sounds like a lot. Yeah. But even I can't lose my own right hand. Right hand? Oh, you mean your fingerprint? Exactly, pal. 
The lock for each locker is coded with a fingerprint. So the only locker we can open is our own. Funny. They look like normal lockers. These are the latest model. There's a trick to the handles, see? The handles? On the other side of the, of the handles there's a sensor. And if the wrong person touches it. Zap, you get a shock? If that's what happened, my hand will be black and smoking every day. In any case, locks aren't that, that obvious. There are even some people out on the force that don't even know about the fingerprint locks. And tell me about SR9. Can you do that for me? Try Goodman's note. Detective Goodman's note and that switchblade knife. I bet Edgeworth was the most surprised of anyone. Because of the SR9 connection. That was Mr. Edgeworth's first big case, you know. Two, de two years ago. That was the first time the world knew Edgeworth was a man to be feared. But why would Evans from that case turn up now? I guess it's not over, pal. Maybe there are some loose ends left on that case. Tell me more about the SL9. Now that was a bloody violent case. Violent? So it was a murder. A serial killing. A serial killing. Maybe I don't want to get involved in this after all. But well, the killer made a mistake, and Mr. Edgeworth built his case around that to nab him. And this was two years ago? That puts Mr. Edgeworth right in the spotlight and started the rumour mill. Rumours about forged evidence? It was supposed to be all cleaned up with the transfer the other day. It was the last job he ever did. Detective Goodman, that is. Huh? What do you mean? Detective Goodman was a detective in charge of the Ethel 9 incident, see? So... So that switchblade knife? The victim took the out knife out of the Evans locker himself? Uh, actually, ooh, hold on. Well, uh... We need to fill in these blanks as well, don't we? You there. Could you take a look at this? This is the ID card record of the people who came in here on the day of the stabbing. Ah, I heard the rumours. So it was Goodman who... Whoa! What is it? The... That second number. It's not your ID number, is it, Detective Gumshoe? Mr. Edgeworth? What? The second number on this list belongs to Mr. Edgeworth. What? ID card record, updating the court record. Thank you. Why would Edgeworth have come to the Evans room? Hmm. Thanks, Gumshoe. We're going to have a look around. Uh, slide, please. Check the evidence. <coughs> glove, please. Someone left a glove here, but only one. Detective Gumshoe, maybe? There you go, pal. Making me out to be some kind of absent-minded detective. That's evidence from the case, you know. You mean SR9? It does have a tag on it. Extremely thin rubber glove. Um... 
Wow. Someone must have broken something big to make all these pieces. Detective Gumshoe, perhaps? There you go, pal. Making me up some kind of hooligan. That's apparently from the, the case. The case? ASL 9 incident, pal. See the sticker on one of the pieces there? Another piece of SL9 evidence. Let's take a closer look. I wonder what shape these pieces were in before whatever it was broke. You want to try and put it back together? Oh yeah, you jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, good luck pal. That's no job for amateurs. Why I spent a good three hours on that before I had to give up? Fantastic, let's hope we're not taking it on uh, three hours. Well, this piece looks like the bottom, so let's try putting the rest in place. Right. So we're looking for sharp points. One more piece. There is a piece missing though. Big piece missing. Huh? Well, I think we did it, but some of the pieces are missing. Yeah, I got that far too in two minutes myself. The problem is finishing it. But some pieces stolen. I bet they were missing to begin with. Still. Doesn't look like the most stable kind of jar. I kind of understand how it got broken. Unstable jar. It is very unstable. Like really top heavy. Um, I think we need to use... Yeah, there we go. I was wondering for a second there. Blood. Search a place for blood, please. That must have been one massive pool of blood. Never seen anything like it. I'm not a professional. What's your opinion, detective? Hmm. Pale blue blood. Maybe Detective Goodwin was actually an alien. This proves that something really happened in front of this locker. I'll make a note of it on the floor plans. Hey, if you didn't want my opinion, you shouldn't have asked. I went Welsh there for some reason. <laughs> Occasionally I do go Welsh. <laughs> never, to be fair, if you're not from the UK, or if you, even if you're from the UK, never confuse a Welsh person with an Irish person because they will punch you in the face. Right. Uh, anything on there? Spray everything. That handprint, though. Definitely want the handprint. Yes, please. I knew it. This is someone's handprint. What? What's the matter, detective? The, this locker. It's mine. It's yours? Please. You have to help me. When they come to, come to take me away, promise you'll testify that he wouldn't harm a fly. You'll do that for me, won't you, pals? This is an important clue. I'll jot it down on the floor plans. What? But you're a detective. Should be something. Let's hang on this side. Is there anything over here? Oh, hi. There we go.
Why am I getting a reaction here? There's no reason for the murderer to touch this spot if he fled out the door. This just might be something significant. Hey. That's some pretty amazing stuff we got there, a pal. What's this? Got luminol testing fluid. Where'd you get your hands on that? Huh? I'd like to get some too. I'll just borrow 50 bucks from the chief. Where do you get this, Emma? I always buy it by mail order. Well, I better join, jot this down on the floor plans too. Hey pal, look at the time. Was this something you need to be doing? It's just that Mr. Edwards' in inquiry committee should be letting out soon. I'm going to give them my report for the day. It might help, you know. Report? You mean the note written on the back of the, that flyer? The one that says nothing but no problems? Hi, it's Mr. Edgeworth we're talking about. I'm sure he can use a report like this. I believe in him. Who needs enemies when you've got friends like Detective Gumshoe? I'm off, pal. Later. I should probably see what Edgeworth has to say, too. Uh, hold on. A piece of white cloth is sticking out. Looks like a shirt. You'd better tidy it up or it'll get wrinkled. Hey, don't look at me. I didn't leave it hanging out like that. Uh, guard station. Let's head out. Uh, move. Thank you. Um, to the entrance. And then we're heading to... Underground parking lot. And high press computer's office. There we go. We made it. Ah, guests, my apologies. Oh, it's you. Have we met somewhere? Huh? Mr. Edgeworth, I beg your leave so long. Edgeworth here? There, standing by the window, a teacup in his hand. Right. He has the hotel bring him tea service. Mr. Redworth, you're back from the district prosecutor's in in office inquiry? That's a bit of a mouthful. I am. By the way, Detective Gumshoe was looking for you. Ah, yes. He brought me the latest information, it seems. Really? Was it helpful? Apparently a new French restaurant is opening near here. I think he was trying to console me somehow. Um, the real info is on the other side, Edgeworth. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I think this whole thing is really taking a toll on him. Inquiry committee, please. So, how did the inquiry committee go? Actually, they decided to treat this not as a case of concealing evidence, but as a communications error during the investigation. Concealing evidence? Yes. Apparently there are some who believe that I concealed evidence. They gave me a warning. You were lucky this time. Again. Again. I've heard them say that so many times. Ever since that case two years ago. You alright for tomorrow's trial? Are you okay for the trial tomorrow? Well, I'm still the presiding prosecuting attorney, however. Something happened? 
They gave control of the investigation over to the police department. The police department? Yes. Any further investigation for this case will be directed by the Chief of Police, Gant. I can do nothing but wait for his results. I see. Why, I ask you, why? All along I've done only what I believe is right. I have nothing to be ashamed of. But still. Wow. I've never seen him this out of sorts. And confirm. To confirm. Where is it? ID card record. Confirm that's you. Alright. I better check this now. As I was saying, I... What's this? A record of ID card usage? Edgeworth, you went into the evidence room that day, didn't you? Just before the incident occurred, no less. Yes, that's true. Why, why Mr. Edgeworth? Please don't look at me like that. I was asked to go by Chief Gant, no less. The Chief of Police? He wanted evidence of a case that wrapped up half a year ago. He told me he wanted me to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. But it was solved, right? Wouldn't have to be... It would have to be if the evidence was already filed. The Chief is never one to explain himself. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. Can I ask what kind of case it was? I can't say. It really has nothing to do with the current case. Now I'm curious about this other case. I better make a note of it. Stubborn as always. I told you this has nothing to do with the current case. Yeah, we'll leave that one to the imagination. Uh, Goodman's note. Goodman's note. There we go. I know you. You've probably got a hold of some information already, right? It all has to do with that case you were on. The SL9 incident. And some dark suspicion you were wrapped up in. You're the man who revived the worst memory of my life. I figured I'd be telling you about this sooner or later. You must be talking about his father's murder in that elevator. Okay, Edgeworth. Why don't you tell me about it? Tell me the truth. Allegations of forgery. The SL9 incident was a heinous criminal serial killing case. The head of the investigation was the Deputy Chief of Police at the time, Damon Gant. That whack your coop was involved in the case two years ago. He was a top officer and it was my first time working with him. I was nervous. Wow, you get nervous too, Mr. Edgeworth? What I, what I want to know is, why was the Deputy Chief of Police on the investigation? In truth, I used slightly more extreme methods than normal. We were dealing with a vicious murderer. If I let him go, the blood would be on my hands. We were now a guilty verdict and the killer was executed. Wait, you didn't? Of course not. I didn't touch the evidence. Yes, I will do anything in my power to run a trial. However, I do have a code and I follow it faithfully. By the way, Emma, the chief prosecutor wanted to know something. My sister? What? 
if you were still studying forensic science. Huh? Yes, of course. Why, just today, Mr. Wright and I were using this. Luminol testing fluid? Hmm. Well then. You might have use for this. Alumin, alumin, aluminium powder for taking fingerprints. It's been chemically treated for better adhesion. For me? Are you sure? You're the enemy, you know. I have no say in today's investigation. Do as you will. Edgeworth. I'm really... No need to thank me. Yeah, take your powder and these fingerprint files for everyone involved. I, uh, thanks. How about giving those to Detective Gumshoe as well? Gumshoe will probably eat it. Fingerprint says. <laughs> well, let's get going. One last investigation. Right. I do remember seeing, seeing a suspicious handprint somewhere. Right, um, thank you, Edgeworth. We're going back to the evidence room, I think. Um, police department entrance. Guard station. Evidence room. And we're back. Um, sorry. Our investigation turned out up a suspicious handprint. Here, in this blood on the de detective's evidence locker. Let's just u let's use a secret weapon we just borrowed. Right, let's get started. First, choose a finger. A finger? Each finger leaves behind a slightly different imprint. So let's choose the finger that will have left behind the clearest print. I really can't tell the difference at a glance. Quit procrastinating and choose a finger. Should we try that one? Okay, now it's time to check for prints. Let me show you how it's done. It must starting to get that sparkle in her eyes. First, we sprinkle the aluminium powder around. Huh? How do you do that? With the X button, see? Ah. Looks like that did the trick. The aluminium powder adheres completely to the print. Once the powder is well is well spread, just blow away the excess. Huh? How do I do that? With the triangle button. Exciting, I know. Imagine you're blowing out the candles on the birthday cake. See? Wow, that looks like fun. Might take some getting used to, though. It's fine. It won't go up your nose or anything. You just pour the powder on thick and blow away the extra. Those are the basics of fingerprinting, Mr. Wright. I guess I better give it a try. I'll see on the original version. Not on the original, on the... Uh, DS version, you tap the screen to put the powder down and you have, actually had to blow into the microphone. Aha, you did it. You had to blow into the microphone to uh, get rid of the powder. It was very cool. Well, obviously you can't, there's no microphone on the PlayStation. But this looks nothing like a fingerprint. Hmm. Now that you mention it, I guess it doesn't. What does it mean? I think it means we're out of luck. Out of luck? The person who left this handprint must have worn gloves. Don't tell me we've been wasting our time here. Hey, calm down. That's just the way it goes sometimes with scientific investigations. But, it does seem a shame. While well, right, why don't we look for other prints? Other prints? Looking at the locker door again closely. It's that darker smudge. Non-blood zone. 
Seems there are fingerprints outside the bloody handprint as well. Let's see if we can find a clear print. Hmm. Fingerprints outside the blood. This thing right here. Dust it. We are dusting it. I think that's enough. I was going to blow there as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Oh, is that right? We're getting the bottom one. Need a bit more. I think we need to fill it in a, bit, a little bit more. A little bit at the top. Let's just. So you only, should only really need the whirl. There we go. Yay! The print's all clear. It's dazzling. Dazzling? Anyway, this print took a lot of effort to find. Let's mash it up right away. So we're not done yet. This is quite a process. Well, there's no point in finding a fingerprint and not knowing who the owner is, right? I guess she's right. Look at the fingerprint data we got from Mr. Edgeworth. Point out the person who you think left these prints. Huh? How am I supposed to know who it is? I could make a pretty good guess. The bloody handprint and the fingerprints are in different places, right? That means that the prints probably don't have anything to do with our case. So, whose fingerprints will we most likely find on this evidence locker? That's got to be Gumshoe, because it's his locker. Oh, there we go, man. Comparing makes total sense for it to be Dick Gumshoe's, because it's his. Uh, Aha! So these prints belong to Detective Gumshoe. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? You gave me this so what lock. I guess that's probably because I was thinking, so what? Okay, so we come, came up with nothing this time, but there's always next time. Sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss. You gotta roll with the punches, Mr. Wright. Thanks for the sympathy. Wait, if I remember correctly, there was one of the handprint in this room. Let's check it out. That was where tester one. This one is a real one. Um, and this one, wasn't it? This is where we got a luminal fluid reaction, right? Right. There was a handprint here. Okay, wanna try using this? There go Ryan sparkling again. Check for prints for sure. Okay, let's check for prints. That's the spirit. Oh. But I have to warn you about something first. What? The area of the blood was wiped away, right? We only ended up finding it by using chemical means. Any prints in that area would have been wiped away too. Oh, right. So that means no prints. Would you say the probability of your hypothesis is high? Don't ask me. Anyway. We must try to find prints that weren't wiped away prints other than the ones left by the bloody hand. So we've got one, two, we've got that thing in there, and I think we're going to take, we've got to be one up here. Because that's where, roughly where the handprint would be. And we're just going to dust, heavily dust here. Tap the button. 
and make it as white as possible. And then blow it away. Shit, need a little bit more down here. You see, you need to be a bit more uh, exact in this one, like you would. There we go. In the DS version, you could get away with it. If you got like 80% of it or 90% of it, you would have been fine. Um, let's have a look. That one. That one looks right. Jake. Jake Marshall. It's a visual match at least. 16 point comparison. So it was Marshall. Hey, these fingerprints, they... Whose are they? Whose? Is it someone I know? It's Officer Marshall. Huh? Officer Jake Marshall? Marshall's fingerprints found on a bloody handprint. That's something new. That's gotta be a coincidence. He's not involved in the crime. Emma. This is decidedly different from Detective Gumshoe's prints. The luminol reaction, the blood, and the fingerprints are in the same place. Oh. Oh. So we have Jake Marshall's fingerprints on a white blood stain. But why would Officer Marshall? So it looks like our investigation is finally turning up some results. I guess this is what you call decisive evidence. I don't believe it. To be continued. Right guys, on that fantastic bombshell, we are going to leave that here for today. We've made some excellent progress, finished the this part of the investigation. I think we are back in court next time. Still don't quite remember what's going on. I know I remember bits of the case, but not the whole thing. I do believe that Marshall is involved in this part of the, the second murder. Not only was there no body after the so-called murder, Goodman attacked Meekins and knocked him out. And when he came round, there was, the body was gone. There was no body. So I think Goodman may not have been in the Evans room. I don't know. We'll find out next time, I'm, I'm assuming. Thank you all for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have liked it, please hit that like button, share, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. And as always, shall see you all on the flip side. Bye-bye.